This episode of Destructoid is brought to you by Gamefly. Coming up on Destructoid, Titanfall aims to put the single player experience in a multiplayer only game. Enter a wicked paradise with the Oculus Rift's first virtual reality sex game. And your voices were heard and Microsoft has dropped the crappy Xbox One DRM. All that and more right now on Destructoid Live. Welcome to Destructoid. I am Tara Long. And I'm Max Scovo. Happy Friday. Happy Friday, Tara. You know, I'm getting used to the Hawaiian shirt. They grow on you. They do a little bit. It does. You get yeah. used to no, it. I, went, I was looking in the mirror today and I was like, did I accidentally turn into like a weird Ace Ventura ripoff? Yeah. Because I didn't do that like intentionally. I wasn't Even like, I'm going to cause your hair is starting I know. to get there. That's what I did. I like, looked in the mirror and I was just like, what's wrong with me? Yeah. I was never even that into Ace Ventura. I like the mask better, oh, but I don't God, know. God, you're crazy. Just Weird. I'm so don't wild. Talk out of your butt, and we won't have uh, any problems. Yeah. Um, so we do have a giveaway today because we are feeling oh so generous, and also because Big Fish Games was nice enough to donate two early release codes for Dark Manor, their new hidden Ooh. object mystery game. Look how cute it is. This is actually already out in Canada, Ireland, and the Philippines. Um, so if you live in those areas, you don't need a code. You can just go download it for free right now. This, these codes are for the people who live outside of those areas, and we're going to be dropping them in the chat sometime during the show. So make sure you are paying attention. These are iOS only, by the way. And uh, yeah, many thanks to Big Fish for donating those yeah. codes. We've always said that our viewers needed some manners, so they gave us some dark That's manners. Um, on to the news, after jokes. Um, so Microsoft, of course, waited until the day after our last show to drop the big announcement that they would be doing a complete 180 and reversing all of those terrible policies that they announced at their press conference a few weeks ago. Don Matrick wrote up a big blog post on Xbox.com Wednesday explaining that the outpour of negative feedback has caused them to reevaluate some of their decisions. So rather than a mandatory 24-hour check-in, there will now only be a one-time system setup that requires an internet connection. Well done. They've also lifted all restrictions on used games, as well as any regional limitations, so all Xbox One games will now be playable on any Xbox console, no matter what country you live in. I gotta say, I don't always agree with the internet hive mind, but I think this proves once and for all that anger can be used for good, right? This is awesome. Yeah, well, or you know, it, that, that was a dumb thing they did in the first place. Well, also that. Um, unfortunately, because of the Xbox One's infrastructure, this does complicate some of their promised benefits. Uh, a day one patch is now gonna be needed, which effectively eliminates the ability to store your entire game library on the cloud, which is something that they promised it could do so. Now, if you go to a friend's place, you will have to actually bring the physical disc with you. Likewise, the sharing library that lets you share games amongst different family members is also no longer gonna be available at launch. Which, Look what you did. Yeah, there's a trade-off. Your complaining ruined everything. Mm -hmm. There's a trade-off, I will admit. I was looking forward to not having to bring discs with me anywhere, especially since we're always carrying them to mm -hmm. and from work. Uh, but a small price to pay, I say. Last but not least, in Microsoft's final attempt to mimic everything that Sony is doing, they started up their Games with Gold program, offering anyone with an Xbox Live Gold subscription two free games per month from now up until the end of the year. Um, so until June 30th, you can grab Fable 3 for free, and then once July rolls around, they're gonna have Assassin's Creed 2 and Halo 3. And then the rest are gonna be released on the 1st and 16th of every month following. That's kind of cool, but I, I don't think that Halo 3 has any gold in it. I think Assassin's Creed and, uh, and, and Fable both have gold. Yeah? Because they're sort of whimsical, but Halo, no, they use like whimsical. space bucks there. I, um, I'm a little disappointed that they're choosing older games. Like PlayStation yeah, Plus no, always has stuff that came out like six or eight months PlayStation Plus ago. has like Saints Row 3 right now. Yeah, like, and they have go... Sleeping Dogs. Yeah. You know? It's pretty awesome. Anyway. So. Uh, yeah, so despite all the bad blood toward Microsoft following E3 this year, that hasn't stopped people from getting excited about the Xbox One PC and 360 exclusive Titanfall. It's on Microsoft platforms. Uh, if, if you missed it, Titanfall walked away with numerous Best in Show awards and with good reason too. The game takes the sort of tried and true, fast-paced multiplayer first-person shooter formula and just flips it on its, on its ass by throwing players into a vibrant sci-fi setting, putting some players in giant robots and giving the rest of them hyper-agility and jetpacks, which is pretty cool. 
Uh, now, what strikes, what might strike some people as odd is that Titanfall is multiplayer only. In spite of the overwhelming popularity of shooters as multiplayer experiences, a single player campaign is something we've kind of come to expect from AAA titles. And it's sort of weird to have that just not be there. Uh, Respawn Entertainment co-founder and Call of Duty co-creator Vince Sampella spoke to Games Industry International on the matter, lamenting the frustration of developing single and multiplayer modes simultaneously, saying, they're two different games. They're balanced differently, they're scoped differently, but people spend hundreds of hours in the multiplayer experience versus as little, of little as time as possible rushing to the end of a campaign. Mm. Now, when it comes to shooters, I realize I'm in the minority for preferring the single player experience to a competitive multiplayer one, but I can also really respect Titanfall and Respawn for having the balls to focus on what they're passionate about and the kind of game they want to make instead of wasting stupid amounts of money on a phoned-in six-hour campaign that hardly anybody plays. So. Uh, Titanfall does enter, uh, in, aim to uh, incorporate the single player feeling in a multiplayer campaign, which is something uh, that's sort of a new concept there. Uh, there's a behind the scenes video that addresses that a bit, and, and Respawn is, I guess, aiming to create enough of a living, breathing world that there's actually a level of emotional attachment uh, to go what's going on for players. So you're not just kind of controlling your, you know, your esports avatar in this virtual, you know, battlefield. Uh, one example would be having NPCs in the game saluting you, making you feel like a like a badass. But also, there's going to be like in-game events and. Uh, and characters and so forth, and they're, they're being pretty vague about this stuff still, but uh, I'm just excited that there's enough new things going on in gaming right now that it's actually hard to tell what's just marketing buzzword bullshit and what could be a crazy next-gen concept that's just hard to convey with videos and descriptions, but the idea of a multiplayer game that manages to have the personality of a single-player experience is definitely something mm -hmm. that I am very curious about. So. I would also just like to point out that I've been saying for many months now that development companies should start splitting up single and multiplayer games because a lot of the time people's interests don't really coincide with both like I love single player games not big on multiplayer a lot yeah. of people who play the multiplayer games don't even touch the single player campaign so just divide your resources and then make them both you cheaper can make twice as yeah. much money it's true <laughs> well yeah I guess if you're charging 60 bucks for each that seems shoddy though mm. yeah um, so speaking of games where you shoot people. That's what we do here. Yeah, you guys like Halo, right? Oh. You probably got really excited when they showed off that Halo 5 teaser at Microsoft's press conference this year. Yeah, you did. We'll get more excited because there's plenty more where that came from. A lot. Maybe too much. It's hard to tell at this point. A Microsoft rep told GameSpot recently that although Halo 4 was intended to be the first game in that Reclaimer trilogy focusing on Master Chief, they've since rethought that decision and have opted instead to go for a saga. Because money. I assume. They also addressed concerns that the teaser might have actually been for a spin-off game, which a lot of people were concerned about since it didn't include the number five, it just sort of said Halo at the end. But Microsoft Game Studios VP Phil Spencer says that is not the case, and he has assured fans that this is a legitimate version of Halo, which seems like a funny thing to call it, I guess. Um, as long as they don't start out, you know, pumping them out every year like clockwork, just to meet a sales quota. I think this could be good news. People like Halo. It's a, it's a huge franchise for Microsoft. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if they have something to do with this. Yeah, probably. I don't know, I like the idea of an illegitimate Master Chief. Like a really yeah. like a really horrible knockoff one who's just sort of like doing stuff that doesn't really quite, yeah. and then all the Halo fans get mad at it, but other people are like, it's a pretty good game. You know, even though he's got a big mustache on the front of his helmet. I've been surprised by the longevity of that franchise. All Monsieur those- Chief. What, forward unto dawn stuff. All the like mini series stuff yeah. that they've done has all been like super popular and well People received. So, um, let's see what else we got to talk about. Uh, one of the coolest things I saw at E3 this year was EVR, which is a virtual reality. Look at how stupid I look here. I look so oh, dumb. Oh God. Yeah, everybody go buy an Oculus Rift. You'll look a little bit, a little bit challenged. Uh, anyway, it's a virtual reality flight simulator set in the world of Eve Online, and. The guys, they put it together for the Oculus Rift, just kind of built for the ground up, and they're like, well, let's make, a, let's make a thing. And as cool as the game was, and as much as I enjoyed piloting this just amazingly realistic virtual spaceship in a totally immersive environment, there was one major problem I had with it, and that I couldn't, I couldn't, have, se I couldn't have sex with anything in the game. That is I was a just problem. In, this, in this ship, and there's nothing to have sex with. So I was incredibly pleased to hear the news that there is a virtual reality sex game in the work for the Oculus Rift. Mm. Uh, the game and the developer are called Wicked Paradise, oh, but God. yeah, right? I I saw that picture and I was really, really worried for a second what? that Willem Dafoe was going to be 
Um, but yeah, this was actually the studio that was originally called uh, Sinful Robot, and they've, I guess, they disappeared for a while, and now they've come back as Wicked Paradise. They announced plans for a sexy VR game ages ago, and now it's kind of, we're sort of, we're sort of seeing it. There's this Wicked Paradise website, and they don't have any real details yet, but they do have uh, some recommendations for prospective uh, fans of this game, and they and they recommend that everybody close his or her eyes and imagine the world and its inhabitants look highly realistic. Mm. Whoa, okay, that's, I mean, that's not really a huge stretch. That's pretty much how it's always been, except, mm -hmm. you know, a few special occasions back in college. And then they're like, imagine walking into a bar in Wicked Paradise, noticing a beautiful lady, talking to her, and seducing her. I've done I've done like three of those four things. I've never been much of a closer, but that's not really that much of a stretch. You're like walking into a business and being like, hello there, madam, good to see you. How are you this evening? Uh, and then they're like, imagine playing your cards right and having passionate wild sex with her. Oh my goodness. I mean, I knew where this was going, but good Lord. Who could have guessed? Wow, sex in the VR headsets. Uh, there's actually an animation demo that you're sort of seeing right now. It's very blurry. Uh, it's, uh, it's basically like, it's a brief performance from the world's most unenthusiastic stripper in history. Mm. She's like a house cat. She just sort of like walks in and like looks around and then like walks and walks stretches. around your chair and then sort of stretches and then leaves. Um, then you shits can watch, on your carpet. Yeah, I I hope that's not it. Anyway, uh, you can go watch an uncensored, unblurred out version of that on their on their official Vimeo. Uh, the website also compares Wicked Wicked Paradise to the game Leisure Suit Larry, which. Really isn't that sexy. It's more of a satire than anything else, unless you're 13. But hey, 13-year-olds like to do stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm I'm just curious to see how this turns out if it ever actually you know does turn out. You know, from a critical standpoint, obviously. Sure. Um, in an interview over on PC Games N, uh, Kara Ellison talked to Wicked Paradise founder Jerowyn Vandenbosch, who claims that the game will be an episodic erotic adventure in the style of The Walking Dead, which again, not a thing that I really no. would be like, oh hey, know. a game that I can have sex with, what's it What's yeah, it like? That doesn't really oh, the one that everybody on. cried at the end of? That's a good thing to associate it with. Uh, and he also said that it, it won't strictly be targeted at heterosexual males. There will be, uh, there will be all kinds of new episodes for uh, you know, men and women and Furries? everybody else. I hope not. Again, again, I hope not. I and can't then, wait for the mobs. Uh, you know, and then also, you know, for all different sexual orientations. But that's all, of course, assuming that this first one comes out. So uh, it's still very early in development, and I just hope I hope it sees the light of day. If for no other reason than we just get to talk about it more. I could I could, I could get to review VR porn. Mm -hmm. God, that's cool. It's like reviewing a time machine. I mean, slightly less cool and probably destructive, but anyway. I remember when we first reported on this yeah. uh, last year, I think it was, and now it's all come, that's my next thing. You, don't, you don't even need this. We you. talked about these things already. I just nervously shuffle them. Um, we talked about it on our show last year, now it's all coming full circle. Oh, this sinful robot <laughs> is entering a wicked paradise. <laughs> all right, on to less offensive topics. Yeah. We're going to thank our sponsor. Gamefly. They are the largest online video game rental service with over 8,000 games, both new and old, across all consoles and handhelds. Plans starting at just $15.95 a month. Gamefly members can rent one to four games at a time and keep them for as long as they like. There are no late fees, there are no due dates, and shipping is always free. It's wonderful. Once you're done playing a game, just send it back and Gamefly will send you the next available game on your list. Or if you really like the game you're playing and you want to keep it, you can do that. Just go to the Gamefly website and click Keep It. And the game is yours at a discounted price. They will even mail you the case and manuals free of charge. It's easy as pie. Gamefly members can also play hundreds of PC games for free with their unlimited PC play plan. Just hit up Gamefly.com slash Destructoid and we will hook you up with a 15-day free trial so you can start gaming right away. Again, that is Gamefly.com slash Destructoid and every sign-up helps support our show. Yeah, and hey, video games are expensive, so mm -hmm. go... And so are Hawaiian shirts, yeah. so you can fuel his disgusting habits. Daddy habit. needs his shirts. Yeah. You gotta get them. Oh, uh, do we have any news about Fallout 4, Tara? We do! It's about how we have no Fallout 4 news. Yeah. Um, you yeah. Think? Yeah, if you guys are like me, you've probably been pining for Fallout 4 news before it was even a twinkle in Bethesda's eye, and now they want you to know it's coming, just not anytime soon, so stop asking. It's getting ridiculous. When rumors began circulating that Fallout 4 was secretly shown off behind closed doors at E3, which, by the way, couldn't have been possible because we were there and we did not get invited. Bethesda's Pete Hines has cleared the air by calling our expectations really unrealistic. Way to ruin the fun, Pete. He said in an interview with Polygon that Bethesda is not into annual franchises, 
saying that trying to spin out a version of our game year after year after year is not something they plan on doing anytime soon. Hooray! He also added that doesn't mean that we are going to take our time and wait six or seven years in between a game that a studio puts out. But these are big games that take a long time, and folks need to understand that we have a very certain way of going about things. Hooray! I love when developers say folks. I just imagine you as my grandpa. Um, so yeah, that's actually a little bit disappointing to hear, but also glad that they don't plan on waiting, you know, a yeah. decade between Fallout New Vegas and the next one. I yeah. can't wait. Just give no, it to me, Bethesda. It'll be wonderful. It'll be a wonderful thing. I also just, it's its weird to imagine that because I've, I mean, I've, I have worked with Pete Hines. Like, he's, hes you've met him, right? We, yeah, yeah, of course. Pete is like the most no bullshit guy that I, I one of the most like straightforward PR people. And he's just like, he's like, yeah, here's the game. You want to, you can check it out. And if there's no game, he'll be like, there's no game. Go outside. No Go game. play outside for a year. He or tells something. it like it is, just yeah. like Grandpa. He also tweets about nothing but sports. That's true. Um, so let's take some questions. Duffman2 said, is final pricing on the Oculus Rift available yet? I was just asking about that before the show. You know, actually. I don't know that actually. How um, much was it when you pre-ordered it? It was I didn't less than 200. It. Oh, I thought you did. Dev kits, I'm hearing in my ear that a dev kit is 300 bucks. Yeah. Unfortunately, so. everybody who wanted one, they're like, ooh, I want one. They're like, are you, you're, they're not a developer, but they just went in there and snatched up all the dev kits. Mm -hmm. So then all the people who could be making really good VR porn games didn't, they had to wait longer for their dev kits because yeah. the greedy little, little You guys are the adopters. reason that we don't have virtual reality It is, is a good yet. one. Will E says, no porn on Google Glass? Try the Oculus Rift. But there is porn on Google Glass, actually. Yeah, I was talking to Dan Reichert from Game Informer 83. He was telling me he was trying on some guy's Google Glass and the guy was flipping through his photos and he was sort of like looking at photos in there and the guy had a bunch of pictures of butts. You just like a ton of butts. Like and women's butts? Yeah, like women's butts. Like exposed? Like a lot of, yes, dirty butts. Just dirty butt oh, pictures. dirty and butts. He, and he was just like, what do you do? What is going on in your Google Glass? And then, so long story short, I think the Giant Bomb guys heard about this story. And so if you go to danreichert.com, it's a Tumblr all about asses. The that games is amazing. industry is a, it is a Indeed. citadel of professionalism. Sotnist says, would be cool if you could use Oculus to look down at your junk and buy DLC to make it look bigger. Why would you? Dream bigger, what's wrong? Why would you want to buy DLC? Just put a slider in there. We've had Saints Row 3 already break down that barrier. You can just be like, oh, I just wanted to be bigger. That's all yeah. you have to do. That's Why would you be, be like, a... oh, I want to pay money for it? No, go click on a banner ad on a porn site. Buy some pills or one of those weird Swedish tube things. Come yeah. on. I That's buy also, life, real ever, life just has to be that much more disappointing when you take it off. Don't ever dream for DLC that you can oh. pay for. Just ask for those to be features in the game. Thank anyway, you guys for your disgusting, perverted questions. I think questions. I'm fired. Yeah, my producer is yelling at me in my ear. Yes. And that is all the time we have for today's show. So thank you guys so much for watching and participating. And thank you to Big Fish Games for donating that, those codes for Dark, Dark Manor. So go check that out if you are interested in finding things in spooky places. Uh, we'll be back here on Tuesday. And by we, I mean myself and Adam Sessler because Tara is going to Singapore. Mm -hmm. And I mean, she's actually going to Singapore. We usually make up weird excuses for when one of us is gone, but yeah. what do you know? Singapore. Uh, I'm going to go there. Are you excited? I am. There's going to be some thick smog that I'm going to have to wade Apparently, through. Apparently, they heard that Tara was coming, so they decided to smoke some <laughs> they trees. They torched the whole city. Uh, in the meantime, if you guys want to follow us on Twitter, you can do that. She's Tara Longest. I'm Max Scoville, and the show is Detoid Show. Yes, we are out of here. Have a wonderful weekend, and we will see you back here next week. I mean, he, he will see you back here next week. I miss you already.